Hi, excuse me for the mess here on the bench, but uh, I'm in the process of doing some repairs on a power supply. And uh, if I do end up fixing this, I will show uh, with you guys in another video. Anyway, this video obviously is not about uh, the repair. I wanted to show you guys something mysterious I found in this unit while I was doing some measurements. And I'm going to show you some of the measurements here and uh, first let you guys guess what the device is and then I will reveal the result. So here I have my BK Precision 2709B multimeter and I'm going to place it here and I'm going to set it to ohm mode. And the device I'm going to measure in fact is just right uh, outside this uh, viewing area which I'm going to uh, deliberately hide it and it has two leads obviously it's a two terminal device here so one lead and two leads so i'm going to do the measurement and uh, want you to pay attention to the multimeter itself as you can see in ohm mode it's uh, oscillating a little bit and uh, so um, that's what the measurement result is so i'll let you think about what this device might be and in the meantime, I'm going to do another measurement. This time I'm going to be using a semiconductor tester. And one of those cheap ones that you can find on eBay. And here's the tester. I put some leads in so that uh, I can actually clip onto the device here. So again, I'm going to clip them on. As you can see here, we have two leads. And I'm going to clip it on Oops, right here. Now I'm going to do a measurement here. Okay. So let's see what this uh, device is. Interestingly, um, I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me just bring it up here. So even though we only have two leads, uh, the semiconductor tester thinks it's a some kind of a MOS device, which obviously is not correct. But again, I'm going to let you think what that uh, device might be. So um, we will soon review what it is and see if you have guessed it correctly. So now are you guys ready for the result? Here we go. What? It's a uh, transformer. Uh, yes, indeed. This is actually a transformer I pulled from uh, the uh, this this board back here, and I'll show you here. And uh, in fact, uh, we have another transformer similar to this in the on the other board, but uh, the one I pulled it off was from um, this board right here. And uh, so. The, the, something was wrong with this transformer. What happened is uh, I found this transformer's primary uh, tabs were broken because the plastic uh, became so brittle all over the years. So when it came off, it actually pulled those very thin wires uh, away with it. So I soldered into wires and uh, put uh, some tape over it to protect the, the delicate solder joints. Now, afterwards, I was uh, trying to see if I did a correct, uh, I connected it correctly. So I used my multimeter to do the measurement and then found out in resistance mode. And as you saw earlier, if I try to measure the resistance, it's showing some really weird behavior. So at first I thought, okay, maybe I did not solder it correctly. And uh, so I double checked the soldering joint and it's still doing this. So, okay, so I then went to, uh, you know, the uh, beeper mode, continuity mode rather, and then we took a look. Okay, it's 143 ohms. So it clearly was uh, uh, connected correctly. And you can see that it doesn't matter which side we measure, it is 143 ohms. And just to verify that uh, the result was indeed correct, so I brought in another meter, and here we have this uh, cheap multimeter here. So we can uh, see um, what the actual reading is. And here we have 143.44, so it is in the ballpark of what we measured with the 2709B.
So what's going on here? Well, because we have a, a transformer, it has some inductance and resistance. So depending on how your multimeter was implemented, and it could well be that uh, the uh, EMF from your secondary, somehow it's uh, interfering with the measurement here, and thus you see that uh, uh, the weird result. So to prove that, uh, let's uh, do another measurement here. So I'm going to, uh, this time while I do the measurement, I'm going to also short some of the uh, primary windings here so that uh, uh, the interference would be suppressed. So we will see uh, if that indeed gonna produce a different result. So I'm going to show you the ohm measurement here. And again, I'm going to measure the winding resistance here. Hang on just one second. I'm going to hold it with my hand. And again, it's showing this uh, weird oscillation, uh, oscillating results here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this uh, tweezer to short out one set of the uh, winding here. I don't remember which set I can, which set is which, but uh, let's try this side first. And you can see that as soon as I short that side, it shows the correct reading. And of, of course, uh, now, oh, whoops, of course, after I remove it, the uh, reading goes high wire again. So now if I uh, do it again, so let's, uh, this time I'm going to be shorting the other side. And you can see that we also see the correct uh, reading here. So this just tells you that sometimes you really can't trust what you are measuring, right? What you are seeing on the measurement. And there are some artifacts because of how the multimeter implemented its internal circuitry. And also uh, for this component testers, unless you know exactly what you're measuring, and sometimes the, the results are just garbage. And, and so the lessons learned here is if the readings that you are trying to measure does not make any sense, um, it's probably a good idea to switch to a different meter and do the same measurement again. And uh, so in this case, obviously, when we are using uh, this cheap component tester and with this actually rather expensive and uh, professional grade multimeter, and they both got some weird results, but we can easily use another multimeter to verify the results. And that's another reason you need to have multiple multimeters, depends on the specific implementation details of your multimeter. And uh, there are going to be some artifacts, especially for the digital meters. And so this obviously is just an extreme uh, condition. And the reason I used that uh, semiconductor measurement to measure is I wanted to see what was the inductance. Maybe you guys can reproduce this result by uh, hooking a inductor in, in series with a, with a resistor of the same value. But uh, of course, you know, I wasn't able to measure it with that semiconductor tester uh, either. And uh, so just to verify, and I pulled out my uh, good old uh, analog meter. And uh, so for the analog meter, I'm going to, uh, let's just put it here. And uh, let's raise the uh, camera a little bit. So for this one, I'm going to do a times 10 because it's 100 ohms. And if I do times one, you're gonna be all the way here. You can't really see the detail. So let's uh, take a look. And uh, it appears to be just right. So now let's uh, hook it up to see the resistance here. So as you can see, it's right uh, over 140 uh, ohms. So again, there's no problem. Sometimes, you know, uh, that's another reason I sometimes like the uh, analog meters because uh, it really doesn't have all those artifacts and you can measure things reasonably well, especially in conditions like this. Anyway, so this is just a short video to show you guys this strange result that you can obtain sometimes using your digital multimeter. And I hope you guys uh, learned something and enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to share and subscribe. 
I will catch up to the next time.